Okay, so this video is another tutorial in using Google Sheets, and this is going to show you how to make the climographs from the data provided. So when you open up that Google Sheet, you should open to this Directions tab. So just read through this. If you're wondering where all the data is, come down to the bottom of the screen, hit Climate Data. Okay, so when you guys initially open up this screen, it's going to have a little bit more to it. Um, these boxes down here will be filled in for you, and there will also be a graph down here. I'm going to take the time now to show you how to actually fill in this information. Um, notice part of the directions tell you you are to fill in these orange boxes using a formula. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. Okay, We already have the data for Los Angeles, California, as well as Albuquerque, New Mexico above. And here we want total annual precipitation. Right? Because it says total, basically that's just taking each one of these cells and adding it together. There's a couple ways we could do this. We could take a calculator out and add 4 plus 5.1 plus 2.8, but that's slow and inefficient. In a spreadsheet, it's very, very easy to make a formula. That's why they're so useful. So any formula starts with equals sign. So you type in equals sum because that's going to add together all of the data. Open parentheses and then you can just click and drag the data that you want. So it goes from cell B3 because it's in column B, cell row 3, all the way down to B14. Right? And then you can just hit enter or you can go ahead and type the close parentheses. So all of this added up is 18.8. Right. If you want the average annual temperature, similarly to the total being sum, average is just equals average, open parentheses, and then all the data you want. In this case it's column C from row 3 down to row 14. So it's equals average parentheses C3 to C14 and I'm going to show you that you can just hit enter here instead of closing the the parentheses. So the average annual temperature in Los Angeles, California is 63.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. If we want to do the max, so that's going to give us our highest value and we're just looking for the temperature here, it's equals max same data range. Okay. Minimum is exactly what you would think it is. It's going to find the minimum value here. And then range. You might think that range would just be equals range. Um, it's a good guess, but that's not actually true. Um, range just means difference between the highest and the lowest. So to fill, figure this out, we're just going to do equals the max value, which is 70.5. Um, that happens in August, minus the minimum value of 59, which happens in a few different months. So the range here, the difference between the highest and lowest temperature is 11.5 degrees. So not much of a range at all. Okay. So when you guys complete this, you need to do this essentially the same steps to fill out these five cells. So same formulas, you're just using this data for Albuquerque rather than Los Angeles data. Okay. Now the trickier part about this assignment is going to be making the graph. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I created the graph for Los Angeles. And you're going to start off by just selecting the data. All right, so I can just click and drag very easily because all the data is right next to each other. You guys are going to have to do something a little bit different. So if you click and drag, and then you hold down the control key, you can also select data that's not next, all next to each other. Right? So remember, that if you want to shift, um, hit control and drag, and it lets you select any amount of data you want, you just have to have that control key held down. Okay. So I'm going to select this data, 
it's very important that you include this top row that has the header information that says month, average precipitation, average temperature. If you don't include that, things are going to get um, very wonky very fast. Okay. Once you have your data selected, you're going to come up here to insert, chart, uh, make sure the chart type says combo. Notice that the x-axis does say month, um, and then there's two series going on. It's got average precipitation, average temperature. So the temperature here, according to legend, is the red line. So that's our line graph for temperature, which is good. And notice our precipitation is a bar graph, which is exactly what we want for a climate graph. Okay. So the next things we need to kind of fix up here are the axes. Okay. So we're going to come to this box that says series, click on the arrow, and you want to change. All right, so this is the precipitation that's already in columns. Color goes from the left axis. That's all good. Then we want to look at the temperature. So that's a line graph. It's in red, which is fine. It's using the left axis. That's not what we want. So we want to change from left axis to right axis. And now we have something that looks like a climate graph. We're using both axes here. The left axis is precipitation in inches. The right axis is temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Just to add a little bit of clarity to this, I'm going to change the point size to seven pixels. So now we can actually see the data points very clearly on our temperature line. Okay. So we're done with the series. Now the next thing we need to think about is just giving it a better title than this um, and then giving the axes some titles to make it a little bit more clear. Okay, so to do that we just go to chart title, change the text here, let's call this climograph for Los Angeles, California. Okay. I'm just going to make this bold and I'm going to center it. Okay. We also want to give our vertical axis, that is the axis on the left hand side, the title of precipitation in inches. Okay. And our right vertical axis, as the name implies, it's the vertical axis on the right side of the graph title of temperature and here it's degrees Fahrenheit. Right. To get that degree symbol you hold down the alt button and hit 248 on the keypad. Alt 248 or you can just Google search it. It's not that important. If you, can, if you can't figure it out just put Fahrenheit. It's fine. Okay. So, so far this looks pretty good. We have our title, we have all the axes labeled, looks great. One thing we can get rid of here is the legend. At this point you should know that climate graphs are only two pieces of information. The line graph is always temperature and the bar graph is always precipitation. So to read the precipitation data you use the left hand axis to use the, or to read off the values of the line graph, you use the right hand axis, the temperature axis. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the legend. You do that by going to position and sitting none. Okay. The last thing you need to be aware of when you make the graph using the Albuquerque data, if your axes are different, you need to make sure that you end up being the same. So I'm going to take you through how you would fix that. So if you end up with a different axis value when you make the Albuquerque graph, here's what you're going to do. All right, you're going to go to vertical axis or the right vertical axis, whatever you need to fix, and you're going to make sure the minimum and maximum values are equal to zero for minimum and six is going to be your maximum. Right, so you just type in 0 and 6. It's not going to make a difference on this graph, 
but I'll just show you that it you can make a difference here. Okay, so if I make the minimum value five, you notice how the bar shifted, and to put that back to what it initially was six. You just have to make sure if you're comparing graphs that the axes are exactly the same. Otherwise, it's very difficult to look at both graphs and actually make good comparisons. Okay, so that's all I needed to show you. At this point, you should be ready to fill in the orange cells with formulas. You should be able to make your own climate graph for Albuquerque. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful. Good luck.